as more browsers and extensions begin to block third-party tracker cookies and operating systems remove the advertising ID. Ad tech companies have turned to fingerprinting. Browser fingerprinting, also called device fingerprinting or online fingerprinting, is a technique that allows websites and third-party ad tech companies to track your online activity without using cookies. It happens secretly in the background without your consent. Fingerprinting is used to identify and track you regardless of if you're using incognito or private browsing mode. Blocker extensions are ineffective and it doesn't matter if you are logged into a website or not. Fingerprinting is even effective at tracking people between different browsers and devices. Fingerprinting works by taking advantage of a fundamental way that websites use scripts that run in the background on your browser. Modern web browsers have built-in APIs, which websites use to run scripts that collect information necessary for functionality, such as screen size or browser for purposes like rendering videos or photos. Most websites wouldn't run properly without these scripts. Unfortunately, scripts used for fingerprinting are very difficult to distinguish from all the scripts required for functionality. Let's talk about different fingerprinting tactics, the information websites collect, how it is used to identify and track you between the different devices, how the information is used, and defenses against fingerprinting. While we mainly cover web browsers, it is important to note that as operating systems remove the advertising ID, software applications and any embedded third-party SDKs also fingerprint in a similar manner. Some of this information is communicated automatically over HTTP, such as the IP address. Device fingerprinting exploits basic browser communications to acquire information about internal media components, such as audio and video cards, as well as peripheral devices, such as headphones. One of the most widely used fingerprinting techniques, called canvas fingerprinting, uses the HTML5 canvas element in the background to force your browser to draw an image or text. The way the browser renders the image or text provides detailed information about your font style, graphics card, drivers, web browser, and operating system. WebGL fingerprinting is a similar tactic that uses the WebGL JavaScript API to force your browser to render images and then infers information about your device's hardware and graphics system based on the rendered image. Audio fingerprinting tests the ways devices play sounds. The resulting sound waves provide information about device drivers, audio hardware, and software. While this hardware and software information is not a unique identifier by itself, when the various information is combined it becomes very unique. Fingerprinting can be used to identify someone with over 99% accuracy. For example, we use the Electronic Frontier Foundation's privacy tool, known as Panopticlick. It found that only one in about 216,000 browsers had the same characteristics as the one we used. The combination of hardware and software components is different for each device, which makes a device fingerprint that websites can use to track you between different browsers installed on the same device, regardless of cookies, blockers, or if you're logged into any website. For example, one cross-browser fingerprinting tactic carries out 20 tasks that use the WebGL 3D graphics rendering standard in browsers. It can identify 36 features independent of the browser. Most people have personal phones and personal computers only they use, so fingerprinting is effective at tracking people across multiple devices. Cross-device fingerprinting is done with a combination of a few different tactics. Websites, ad tech companies, and data brokers can sync device fingerprints based off of the public IP address of devices that are on the same Wi-Fi network. They can use the unchangeable hardware ID built into your Amazon Fire, Roku, or other devices on the same Wi-Fi network to work around the constantly changing dynamic public IP addresses. Sometimes they even emit audio beacons and ultrasound noise humans cannot hear but other devices can, which allows nearby devices to identify one another. Cross-device fingerprinting usually requires building maps and models that uncover patterns and track how devices are used. For example, your cell phone joins the same Wi-Fi network as your personal computer every night when you come home from work. If a person opens an email and clicks a tag link in the email, the sender will be able to identify the user on every device they click the link. While ad tech companies and marketers have become very confident using these techniques to track users across different devices, if all else fails, they can buy information from a data broker and sync it with the information they have. Similar to the third-party tracker cookie framework, ad tech companies share functionality for website developers to get access to fingerprinting info for cross-site tracking, effectively logging your browsing history. This browsing history paints a clear picture of you, your preferences, hobbies, life circumstances, and even sensitive information like personal health information. This information is most commonly used for advertising or dynamic pricing based on your browsing history. Fingerprinting can be used for good purposes. For example, banks use fingerprinting for conditional access. If it doesn't recognize your device, it'll prompt a second authentication step. 
Unfortunately, the information is commonly sold to data brokers. You've probably heard it's just used for advertisement personalization, or the data is anonymized. Statements like those from companies are misleading and in some cases outright false. Eve Alexander de Minchoy, an assistant professor of computational privacy at Imperial College London, found it takes just 15 characteristics to re-identify someone 99.98% of the time. All of this personal information is traded hands multiple times. Tech companies and data brokers buy, sell, and aggregate the personal information. They then resell the information to countless third parties who usually resell it again. The original company and even the original data broker have no control or oversight into how the information is used after it is transferred. Oftentimes the personal information is stored with inadequate security. In many cases, just about anyone can buy the information. Some browsers and extensions provide defenses against fingerprinting by manipulating the browser API to provide generalized information, basically hiding unique attributes. Some browsers like Brave randomize the attributes the API gives to websites so that your fingerprint is constantly changing. Firefox tries to block fingerprinting scripts.